Today, I want to talk about how we've just set record-breaking FTD numbers in AMC and APE. I want to explain how this goes hand in hand with the reverse split and it'll cause the cost of borrow fee to skyrocket over a thousand percent, over two thousand percent, potentially even over five thousand percent per year, and how ultimately this makes AMC more difficult to short post split. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So let's start by going through the APE FTD data for the month of March, where we've just set new record breaking FTD numbers. You can see that in APE, on a day-by-day -day basis, the number of FTDs is actually fairly low, apart from obviously this date on the 20th of March, where we saw 46 million FTDs in a single day. We also saw a significant number of FTDs as well on the 17th of March here, where we saw over 13 million. For AMC, we actually see a slightly different story, where we see a very high number of FTDs almost every single day. There's days here where we set 6 million FTDs, 3 million, multiple days of 2 million, and multiple days of 4 million as well. For the month of March, especially in the second half of March, there's only one singular day where AMC did not see over a million FTDs in a single day. And obviously, if we look at the FTD chart for APE, we actually set more FTDs on the 20th of March than we did on launch. And again, similarly for the AMC chart, we're seeing way more FTDs than we saw in 2021 and obviously for the whole of 2022. And so far over the last few months, these FTDs just continue to get larger and larger. And so I want to explain why high FTDs goes hand in hand with a high cost to borrow fee and why this cost to borrow will actually increase post split. As Flamin' Hot tweeted, he said post split, there's only going to be around 140 million shares in the float, and therefore the cost of borrow will go up significantly because these shares will be significantly harder to locate. Now that's something that's an absolute undeniable fact. With less shares in the overall float, the remaining existing shares will become more difficult to locate. And if a share is harder to locate, it increases the chance of there being an FTD as a result and increases the chance of the borrowing fee going up even higher. Ultimately, post reverse split, it will cost the shorts more money to continue shorting AMC and keeping their short positions open. While we will see less existing synthetic shares post reverse split, because obviously the 10 for 1 reverse split reduces the number of synthetics, it will be significantly more difficult for these shorts to create new synthetics as the float is so much smaller. The float is smaller, the cost of borrow fee is higher, and therefore the penalties for creating synthetic shorts and failing to deliver those shares are higher as well. Therefore, it's significantly more difficult for the shorts to push AMC down further by creating new synthetic shares. And we can see that actually this is already happening. As Retail Stocks tweeted, he said one of his friends on his trading platform had an 800% cost to borrow fee for AMC. And if they wanted to short AMC, it required 300% margin. And that means the short one singular share of AMC, which would cost $5.34, you had to have $16.02 in your account on deposit and pay $42.72 per year to short one singular share. It seems these shorts have lost their way and have gone absolutely crazy, spending over $42 per year to short one singular share of a $5 stock and holding a 300% margin requirement, especially at a time when these hedge funds and these market makers are struggling more and more every single day to meet their margin requirements. And as James said, the demand for AMC shares is insane. TD Ameritrade is currently offering customers over 197% per year to lend out their AMC shares. James said that apes underestimate how many times this float has been sold short with FTDs, sham resets, and synthetic tokenized shares. And that's how you can see that after the reverse split, when the float is so much smaller and shares become even more difficult to locate, it will be significantly more difficult for the shorts to generate new synthetic shares, and it will cost them so much more. The cost to borrow rate will increase from 1000%, likely to 2000%, maybe even as high as 5000% per year. That means that shorts would have to spend 50 times their total short position just in annual borrowing fees alone. That means the short a billion dollars worth of AMC shares, that would cost them $50 billion per year. Now just some quick math for you, if you take 365 days in a year, divide that by the 50 times their total short position, that means they'd be spending their total short position of a billion dollars every 7.3 days. 
So they'll basically be reshorting their entire synthetic boatload of shares on AMC every single week, over and over again, just to stay alive. Guys, be sure to sign up to Moomoo, the sponsor of today's video, by using the link down in the description below. You can currently receive up to a whopping 15 free shares, entirely commission-free trading, free level 2 market data, and most importantly of all, Moomoo is very easy to use and it's very, very clear. Moomoo also have tons of technical indicators and advanced charting tools. And with Moomoo, you've also got free 24-7 customer support and you could also trade around the clock with the full extended trading hours. And as Crystal Ball tweeted, he said the price of AMC run up that high in June of 2021 to $72 per share on just FOMO and call option volume alone. Obviously, that happened without the massive forced closing of shorts because shorts never closed out of their short positions. And he said this run up will happen again, but only this time it will be more sustainable as we launch from a higher starting price and move up in bigger increments because this time you'll have FOMO, you'll have call option buying, and you'll have the shorts being forced to close out of their short positions as they end up being liquidated. And therefore, we won't be moving from $8 to $10 to $14 to $20 and above. We'll be moving from $30 to $40, $50, $70, $100, $150, $200, and so on. Instead of moving in one or two dollar increments, we'll be literally moving in $10, $20, $50, or even $100 increments. Now, some of you may be saying, Tom, these shorts managed to short AMC down from $70 per share down to $5 per share. Why, after the reverse split, won't they just reshort AMC down from $30 back down to $5? Well, as I said, it's actually going to be significantly more difficult to short AMC post reverse split because these shares are going to be more difficult to locate. But also, let's talk about how long it took them to short AMC down from $70 down to $5 and what would happen over the next two years if we don't perform that reverse split. So it took the shorts 566 days to short AMC from $70 down to $5. And I do believe that in another 566 days without the reverse split, they could easily short AMC from $5 down to, say, only 50 cents per share especially because without the reverse split, Adam Aaron will be forced to sell more Ape shares into the float to raise capital for AMC if necessary. Remember that while there's currently around 900 million Ape shares in circulation, he's authorized to sell up to 2.5 billion Ape shares in total. That means that Adam Aaron could sell another billion and a half Ape shares at only a dollar or two dollars per share to raise additional capital for AMC. But obviously with the reverse split, if Adam Aaron is forced to issue new shares to raise capital, he only needs to sell, say, 10 or 20 million shares, not a billion or a billion and a half. And I think if Adam Aaron did dilute apes so significantly by selling an additional billion shares, it would cause the price of AMC to fall significantly as well. And therefore, not only is it harder to short AMC post reverse split, it's actually easier to short AMC and Ape without the reverse split because Adam Aaron will be forced to issue additional equity at such a lower price per share. And obviously, if these shorts did short AMC down to only 50 cents per share in the next 566 days, AMC runs the risk of being delisted, and at which point the shorts would actually win. Now, I do think it's unlikely the shorts would last an additional 566 days, especially with the current high short borrowing fees. If these shorts are paying 1000% per year, that means that over 566 days or over two years, these shorts will be paying over 2000%, which is 20 times their total short position. And that's why, as Crystal Ball tweeted, he said the only way that shorts can win is if they're successful in infiltrating the community and ruining AMC sentiment. And you've seen the sheer amount of FUD we've seen in the AMC community over the last few months. So it's obviously these shorts are trying everything they can possibly do to infiltrate the community. And as Crystal Ball added, he said they're trying so hard to do so. With the stock bashing, the misinformed, hateful posts and the manipulative space calls, all showing a lack of understanding on the overall situation. And as Ryan tweeted, he said he's never seen so much division over AMC. He's seen nothing like this in over two years. And this is actually something we knew would happen over two years ago. We said we know the only way these shorts can win is if they infiltrate the AMC community and somehow force the apes to sell their shares. 
because we know these shorts won't survive another 566 days with high borrowing fees. And we know that with the reverse split, they won't be able to push AMC below a dollar per share and get it delisted. And therefore the only way they can win is infiltrating our community and trying to convince as many people as possible to sell their ape shares and then sell their AMC shares as well. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.